in thinking particles we had improvements on shape collision and on the interface so we will see an example to discover what changed i have an skeleton downloaded from sketchfab individual pieces and i will try to use uh, shape collision to make this break or fall down so i import the objects there bonds goes to bonds ground goes to deflector i have some gravity we should see something going down it works let me turn off this visible there is there are no dynamics i only have a force here so let's create a shape collision before what you will do is to create a shape collision define the group here that will be shape collision and then you define there your properties for shape collision but you don't have anything there and that's because you need to define it as a bullet bullet has a way to define this by nodes we need to do the same with shape collision so you can do it on the same shape collision dynamic set i like to create my own that i will call sc properties and you can drag and drop bones and you can drag and drop deflectors then we need to create shape collision we have the shape collision bridget connect these two bonds and this is another feature now when you drag and drop something to one node to another on the top you will see that you can see everything that you can connect these two that's pretty cool so now we will define our shape collision as in bullet shape i will say it's a voxel and let's say six a state active it's good and we will let this as a default let's drag and drop this here drag and drop this here you can see that now when i drag and drop this particle to shape rigid i expose all these parameters i only want the particle and this we will change it to static so now let's see what changed now this falls down and as you can see it works as we will expect uh, pretty cool ship collision is as stable as before there are some improvements on performance on shape collision uh, this is a quite a heavy mesh and it's doing it's voxelizing it so you don't have any problems with concave shapes and with the friction itself that it's one important part of tp you can see it it's it's not even jointed but it looks like it's jointed so maybe here gravity is not strong enough yep this should be minus 98 so we can see this behaving as we would expect uh, then if you want to decrease the friction you do it on the node itself so static friction instead of one we will put 0.5 and dynamic 0.5 the same maybe 0.7 for the ground itself and you can go even lower and the very cool thing about this is that now you can expose static friction and dynamic friction and instead of having a fixed value because before when it was a group it was a fixed value now you can go and add a random value connect it there and connect it to dynamic and static the colors you can now is change it i change my colors as you can see uh, another thing that you can do now is that you can increase this the common panel of tp and it's very helpful because it's much easier to see things happening anyways i change all the colors and i found now that the inputs are too clear something like that so now you can see it's a little better so we have this done and the randomize here i will put it between 0 0.2 and 0 0.6 and by animation so this will happen only at the first frame so you will have some particles that will be more uh, have more friction others will have less friction so something i like on ground i will add a sphere let me deactivate that i will have a geosphere and i will animate it 
so we break this guy the first frame I want to have it there and in some frames we make this because it's already inside ground it will go as a collider so now activating that one more time and now we can see that it works but we don't have any type of joints so next thing I will do is to create some joints here another thing that we can do is to disable these sticks yes so for joints I will do this full screen and uh, let's work there for our joints what we will use is a helper geometry geom contact it's very useful and we will load our objects so we need helper objects connect this there and we will use a group so for that we need a group so everything all of our bonds will go to this geom contact we will we only want this to activate it one time so condition a standard time interval frame zero it's fine these values are fine by default we need an sc join this one particle from and particle two we have contact position but and we have object aid but that's an object we need to convert it to particle to do that go to helpers geometry geom object so we will load all our objects from here we will load this id and we have our particle we convert the geometry to a particle now so from this particle and from the other particle we will do the same so now we load all the objects we check the ids of these new objects and this will be particle 2 so particle and then we have as well the wall position that's very important and we want this wall position on contact position and that's all what we need to do let's say we want to define it on shape collision spherical should be fine we can try different ones right now it's not breakable but let's see what happens and if it works like that let's go back one frame so i think it's working the only because i can see it here that it's all together i will say that the we need to define the geom contact better we only are creating joints when the distance is below 0.01 we will make this bigger and see if this has an impact now it looks for further away points so as you can see now everything stays together because it's creating joints on the head and everywhere and this works we have these crazy movements that's because i am doing it one subsample and we will need two because it's quite fast and we would like as well to make it breakable that we will do it next so now you can see we have it working as expected kind of funny let me okay let's add another box why not i will add another box there and in fact let's change this okay i'm doing some crazy stuff now what i want to do is to make this guy fall over there and it will be standing here so let's see if we can make it fall down. Don't worry about that. Should be fine. Go one frame front, back. So now you can see we're making it. And look at that. Uh, some crazy stuff going on but i guess it's what you will expect we need to make this breakable so we need to add some 
properties there. I will expose the breakable helper math boolean. Let's make this. Well, I can define it there as well, but we can do it from there. And velocity and rotation. I would like to define it by a random value so we can have some variation there. Per particle. So now doing that, we can access all this information. And uh, let's say break velocity threshold, and this value as well will go to break rotation threshold, and from 0 to 10, and it's a matter of try at this point. So now we can see that it breaks quite fast. We would like a little more resistance, so let's increase the minimum to 2 and the maximum to 50. Now you can see, I'll see it from the beginning. It breaks, so maybe the minimum is still too small. Now it's too big. I guess that from 4 to 20 we will have a nice range. It will depend always from your object force, but here we have it. Boom, breaking, some stuff gets together, and some disjoints. We can add a volume break and we can do it way more complex, but that's a basic tutorial to, to see some of these new features. Something that we didn't see yet is the comments and I like the comments a lot so let's see how it can help us for example this is not really complex right now but can get complex really fast so let's say we want to group things together I would like to group this you can do click like selecting it but then you do right click and do a make comment and that's new now in the comment you can write something uh, here we detect contact for joints. So now this is a, a comment that you can see, you can move this along. So it's way easier to, to know what's going on when you are zooming in and out. And yeah, I think it helps a lot. Then another thing that you can do, if you do right click normally and disable, you only disable the comment, you are not really disabling this. But if you do control plus right click and disable, you will disable everything inside. And that's kind of helpful. You can resize this box. So if you want to add this um, note inside this comment, you click it, right click, selection add. And now all this goes together and you would like to maybe put it there. You will be able to expand this and move all this together. Uh, so pretty handy. Other stuff that we didn't cover is that let's say that we want right now to update this boolean with this other one. Before you had to shift click to remove the wire, but now you can simply click and drag and replace it. So you save one click. There are a lot of things like that on the UI that is really helpful because the command panel now it's expandable. Things like, for example, these layer names, you can read it way better when you have a big layer name. It's very helpful when you work on big projects to see everything. And some stuff has been as well enhanced, like memory op. You have all the benefits of this uh, wider Panel, but as well, when you have a lot of memory ops, now you can expand it on this side. This is super helpful if you work with memory ops. You know that sometimes it's a pain when you have a lot to move around. This way is way easier. And yes, that's some of the improvements on Drop9. I hope that you like it because there are a lot of things that we didn't cover yet as well. And there are improvements on Claw, there are improvements 
on volume break and multiple bug fixes in different areas. And overall, I think it makes it a great update to Thinking Particles, making it more powerful than ever. If you have any question about Thinking Particles, check our forum on Effective Technical Directors, as well check our courses. We have different courses covering Thinking Particles. Thank you guys and see you soon.